board. Okay, hello, welcome to episode 405 of the Self Help Podcast with me, Edward Lamb, and my good pal, Sean Orford. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very, very well, really. Um, the amount of people that I'm working with who are, it, it's that increasing sense of what I'm seeing as COVID burnout. Mm. You know, people have kind of symptoms of depression, but they're not kind of depressed. They just feel like they're flat. And it's that thing about people's energy levels are like a, a punctured tennis ball bouncing on a peat bog. It's just like, mm. <laughs> That's yeah. quite an analogy, that one. It punctured doesn't bounce. Tennis. It doesn't bounce. Yeah. Can you puncture yeah. a tennis ball properly? I guess, I know you can, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't own that. That was Stephen Fry. Uh, uh, in one, one of his books, he was, he was talking about, I, I think he was talking about someone's enthusiasm as being like a, a punctured tennis ball belting on the people. Uh, and that, that's always stuck in my mind because I, I, I get that quite a lot when people just got that kind of... Yeah, yeah. it was well, yeah. fascinating times, really, as always on planet Earth. You know, schools were back in starting this week. So yeah, yeah. big change for me. I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm the minority or not, but I, I quite enjoyed this little few-month gap we had after Christmas where I could hang out with my lads uh, and the family in general a bit more or my my immediate family not been hanging around with you know mum and dad and all that stuff obviously yeah. um but yeah it's so I'm, i was a little bit sad really to, to let go of them again because we've had a great time on the whole homeschooling and you know mucking around in the house yeah but, yeah um, it, it does seem to be split same same with the kids they were interviewing kids going back in and some kids were like, oh, I can't wait to get in. I want to see my friends. And other kids were like, oh, I want to stay at home. I don't want to go back to school. Mm. So, But I, I was thinking that reflects how people are going to be when they say you can go and do any restaurant and any show. In it, and there's going to be people that rush out and do it. And other people to go, oh, no. You know, oh, is it safe? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a gradual process, isn't it? But we're, we're talking about money today and we're on in kind of or power uh, and energy in kind of step eight of the the online course that we're doing at the moment so yeah yep. do, do check out the website liveinthepresent.co.uk for the previous steps along the way and a chance to download the chapter from our book uh yeah. no cost yeah um but yeah like i say it's it's going to be a fascinating year uh right around the world i mean it, life is always fascinating isn't it because people are um just endlessly fascinating anyway but yeah, there's, there's this gonna there's gonna be a real push to return to life as we know it or as we knew it, but we've all been stuck in our houses and you know sheltering away for so long that we've formed new habits, haven't we? So it's like, mm, yeah. how's this gonna play out in the next few months and the next year or so? It was interesting for me after we did the um, the session on again beyond being stuck. The amount of people that sent me messages about God, I'm stuck. I feel really stuck, and to me that. A lot of it at the moment is the COVID, I've run out of fuel kind of stuff. Mm. I'm like, oh, can't do anything, you know. Um, yeah. I guess you combine it with, it's that time of year as well, isn't it? We're kind of just clinging on to the end, end of winter and spring is sort of there, but not not quite properly. So it's a time of year when people are a bit low on energy anyway uh, and kind of, you know, waiting, waiting to get going again. So um yeah well, one of the one of the things would be when people are saying oh, i feel flat and i'd be saying to them, you need to go out and have some fun but it's like you can't actually do that at the moment because the things that people would want to do that would be fun and like off the menu you know we're assuming that things are going to get better um it might be a bit bumpier than we expect you know with things like the isle of man shutting down again and Chris Whitty was on TV um, earlier saying about, um, you know, the levels are going up in some parts of the country and there are parts of Europe that have had to go back into lockdown again. Yeah. You know? So we've got to be really attentive at this moment to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, fascinating stuff. All right, we'll, we'll get on with the episode. I'm going to share my screen so people that are watching via the YouTube link can see some slides but don't worry if you're uh, just listening via the normal podcast um audio only you won't be missing out too much these are just some kind of cues and notes that we do because this is a course that you used to run face to face sean isn't that right yeah yeah 
yeah but uh, we did it as the 10 weeks didn't we but then realizing that it takes more than 10 weeks to get through a lot of this stuff and yes you're priming people um but uh, sometimes step one might take you 10 weeks or maybe a bit longer to work through you know so um, so yes wh why why are we talking about money at this stage in power well very often when we look at the process in the course about people wanting to change their lives uh very often the issue of money came up either uh, they were changing their lives because they wanted more resource, more money, um, or they were having problems trying to do what they wanted to do with their life because they lacked the resources. So we, we were looking a lot at money generally. And, and I think one of the, the really useful questions to ask yourself as you look at this stuff is how much money do you need? What do you need? And it's like most people talk about i need a million pounds and i don't know why it's a million a million is like a nice round figure i guess but most people a hundred thousand pounds would pay off the debts uh, get rid of the mortgage you know be a holiday in a new car they'd, they'd be fine yeah you know? mm. but we look at this amount of money what do we need um and very often we don't need money we need results we need energy we need other people we need bits of stuff and machinery and equipment to do what we need to do. Um, so it isn't necessarily that we need money, but money is a good thing because when you look at money, which is just a form of energy, that's all money is, is give, money gives you the ability to do something. Mm. Um, very often money, our attitude to money is very much about our attitude towards ourselves. It's that whole kinds of things, you know? Mm. So, I mean, we're looking at the idea if you focus um, in, in, it's like on your dreams and your beliefs, it's the issue about how rich do you feel at the moment? Yeah? And if you don't feel rich, what's holding you back? But one of the things that is really useful to just get your head around is the people that we see as our poorest people in this country, people on um, benefits and all that kind of stuff, are still globally in the top 10 richest people on the planet mm -hmm. yeah and that's like well and when you think about people that are living on a dollar a day or or whatever um it's like we we live in a very rich country but we don't necessarily see ourselves like that it's easy to moan about what i haven't got rather than to be in gratitude which is what we looked at a few sessions ago for feeling the richness of where we are and what we have got yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the term wealth has been hijacked a little bit by the world of finance and our obsession with money, because my, my Instagram um, profile uh, is just says richest man in the world. Uh, and I've kept it that way for a while. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely not like financially the richest man in the world. I'm probably in the top 5%, probably, <laughs> which is pretty good going. So do, do people send you messages saying, can you lend me a five? No, actually, they never have. Would you know it? Wouldn't you? Uh, I, I, I should be online as soon as we could be finished. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the point yeah. is that uh, when it says richest man in the world, here's the proof. So then people can then see you know, it's a private account. So, you, you know, for, just for friends and family, really. But, you know, then if you look through my Instagram feed, if you're uh, in the club, you can see hopefully why, what I mean by that, because, um, you know, obviously with social media, it is easy just to post all the, the good parts from life and not the bit where, you know, yeah your kids have wet the bed in the night or throwing up or whatever <laughs> stuff like that, which generally don't make it into the, my feed. But you know, the stuff that I can do, even with a, what I feel is quite a modest amount of, of cash, financial, financial, financial cash each month or every year, my salary um, is, is amazing, you know, and you know, you don't need, yeah, that million pounds to kind of live a healthy life. And in some cases, as I'm sure you've, or well, you have talked about in the past, having that weight over your head of millions of pounds and kind of maybe, mouths to feed financially in terms of staff and all that kind of stuff and tax bills can be a, a massive head, a massive headache and it's something i've avoided well, I, actually to be honest i i've worked with people who are amazingly well off i mean ridiculously well off compared to anyone else um but i've been the most miserable people in the world you know and it makes you realize that um that having money doesn't make you happy um but when you haven't got it and when to you someone says what do you want people say oh you know i, I want to win the lottery i want to i want this you know because if i had this amount of money i would be yeah um so I, I see money 
for most people like a magnifying glass that when you if you're a miserable person the money allows you to be even more miserable in a bigger way and if you're a happy person then it can make you happier yeah because it just allows you to do more of what you could do yeah um, okay. and lots of people that get money don't use it they hold it and then the energy stops flowing around the system the, the financial system only works because the energy flows as soon as we start holding it back and it's not flowing then everybody becomes impoverished because it's not moving around the system and yeah. some people hold it and other people have none so what was what was the what was talk about money in your house when you were a kid growing up because uh, you had quite a you were a poor upbringing is that fair to say in, in London yeah 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 I mean we, I, I, I think again it's a relative statement isn't it because compared to lots of people in the world we were amazingly rich but I mean from my point of view to be able to achieve what I wanted which was fairly kind of meager considering but I did from 11 onwards I was doing paper rounds and, and I ran a business which was um there, where I was in London, there were loads of dumps. And what I would do is I'd go around the dumps and collect bits of bicycles and make bicycles and sell them to the kids on the council estate. <laughs> um, and, and my mother, when she needed to borrow half a crown off me, because she didn't have any money, and I had money in, in, in my business, um, and, uh, and she said, said to me, by the time you're 20, you're either going to be rich or in prison. Sadly, I was neither, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hang on a sec. Let me just kill that phone call. Yeah. It'll just be a sales call, probably trying to, yeah, someone on the other end of the line trying to make a, make a living, which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Out of you. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we talked on the course years ago, I remember, and it's mentioned in the book about kind of the phrases we use around money and attitudes, and they're shaped quite early yeah. on, aren't they? In, in, yeah. You know, so do you want to money doesn't to grow on trees, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I think that that whole idea about but we talk about the filthy rich, you know, and, and I think that when you look at people, uh, yeah, yeah, dirty word, there you go, um, that that whole idea about money and power go together. If someone's driving a, a nice car or they live in a nice house, do we think, oh, wow, isn't that amazing? Well done. Or are we thinking, oh, you creepy bastard, who did you rob to get that money? You know. <laughs> And I, I think that in some ways, when we're looking at the Black Life Matters stuff, which has been going on, bottom line reality is that the uh, Europeans, not just the Brits, the Europeans, they go around the world raping and pillaging and stealing other people's resources um, and indeed using those people as resources. And uh, it was very easy then to end up in a situation where um, uh, the whole of the western economy was built on the backs of the empires that people built you know that uh, countries built uh, and that i guess is coming home to roost now and a lot of the, the the people's attitudes to what's going on not least of all we have the situation where we've had the interview last night with megan and harry yeah. and uh, one of the one of the big issues that's seems to be developing out that interview is the issue about um, racial equality and racial attitudes um, mm -hmm. that, are, that are very much tied up with this whole thing about money and where did the money come from and the resources and who should yeah. have what, you know. I guess um, I've, 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 I've kind of swerved that whole debate for quite a while, but it's impossible. it's been almost impossible to avoid it in the last 24 hours here in the UK for years. Yeah interview is Ed. I'm still a bit behind the curve probably, but it, it is, does seem to be bringing together a whole host of arguments and, and ideas about what it means to be British and kind of the power system of the British yeah, Empire, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff and whether we should be proud of it or guilty about it, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it is, it is really, you know, on the surface, it's quite a tabloidy like mm -hmm. spat, but deep down there are some some wounds there that like societal wounds that, um, that really need uh, wounds that need healing don't they yeah yeah but yeah I, I look at it like this is that money is to me is power right now power is a dirty word to us we don't use it well but if you look at an engineer's definition of power power is the ability to do work 
like an engine has a power rating, right? And that's really interesting because without power, we're powerless. And that for me means that if I want to do something philanthropic, if I want to go and look after other people, the only way I can do it is to exercise power. Now, mm -hmm. if I want to save people on the other side of the earth, if I don't have any money to use as power, I can't help them. Yeah. So, I mean, there is, there is a whole difference between someone who creates wealth and keeps it hidden away for themselves and someone who creates wealth and uses it for others. So the things like the, the, all the biblical models, uh, and, and they replicated pretty much in Islam as well, is that what do you do for the poor? And in, in uh, the Christian faith as it developed, there was this concept that you should give 10% of your net income away to the poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, now, I don't know how many people do that, um, but it, but there's there's that sense about what are we doing with the the wealth that we have and and like I say, people in, in our country are very wealthy, although they may not recognise that compared to other people in the world. They are. Yeah, I know, and it, you've got to be careful, haven't you? Kind of what it, I remember seeing an article, you know, deep in my kind of un, trying to understand and unpick car culture and you know the the power that one can feel when you own a car. And you know they are the handy tools for getting around in, but the the societal cost is is becoming far too great. So I've mm -hmm. been trying to figure out how we undo that culture. But the, I remember hearing a story of um, uh, it's in America. So there's, there was a, a a shop, a retail outlet where one member of the, the, the staff um, couldn't afford a car, um, and I think they were getting public transport to work every day, um, and the the rest of the staff kind of clubbed together and took pity on this poor person who was forced oh my word to get a bus into work <laughs> so they bought her a car you know they all clubbed together and bought this and it was big this new story like isn't this wonderful isn't this amazing mm -hmm. um you know and, I, and i'm thinking hang on a minute because you're just going to saddle this person with it a whole lot of extra costs now because you know from fair dues the bus can be late and it can be you know it could take a bit longer but car ownership is a very expensive business, you know, once you start to add in the maintenance, the fuel, the insurance, the tax. Mm. So, yeah, have they just saddled this person with a whole, but maybe that's why how money works, you know, and kind of maybe that's why part of why we all have cars and use them because it kind of creates all this extra money in these extra little industries that pop up in terms of maintenance and, and yeah, insurance and all that kind of stuff. And the make the kind of, keeping the roads in a, in a good enough condition so that we can all bomb around in our SUVs. It's just, is that how, is that how finance works? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We were looking at capitalism a few sessions ago, weren't we, about it only works if it keeps expanding. Mm. If it stops expanding, then we are in a mess, really. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Oh. If, if we're looking at ourselves individually, it's like, what's your money blueprint? Yeah. Um, the the issue about you know do you know how much money you're going to earn in the next 12 months it's been a bit weird with uh, lockdown and everything you know um, and do you know how, how much money you would earn in the next five years um, and how does it feel when you look at that how does it feel when you look at those figures does it feel like yeah that's uh, that's a really good thing or are you thinking oh my god yeah and that takes us on to that bit about looking at the whole idea about the law of attraction and where we go and it's like thoughts become things you know and the feelings are our motivation you know the thoughts lead to feelings lead to motivation lead to actions and if we're feeling like oh god i can't do anything but it's like where's the creative potential like negative thoughts bad feelings lead to inaction or negative action whereas if we look at it positively what can we do to make it different? Yeah. yeah. And on, on the course, when we were doing it, people were saying things like, um, uh, I, if I could just wake up in the morning with a smile on my face, that'd be me done, through to people that wanted projects that were involving millions of pounds. Now, nothing's too big, nothing's too small. It's like, it's to do with self fulfillment. Yeah. Um, and if you want to earn loads of docs, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I guess that the issue comes down to what you're going to do with it. Once you once you've earned the dogs, you know what what are you going to do with that money? Yeah, yeah exactly. And you know, we I think I've mentioned it a few times during this little 
online course we've been doing but it's it's important to remember as well not just the kind of the goal but also the the journey along the way and how satisfying it's going to be and you know the, the goal it will occupy a few days of your time you know when you get there um you know as you kind of bask in the glory but the the year the two years the 10 years you know before that you know it's important to consider what <laughs> what that experience is going to be like and it's not that you have to enjoy every minute because there can be satisfaction that comes from hard work you know and blood sweat and tears and all that stuff but um yeah it's important to consider that that journey along the way i think i I've, I've worked with people predominantly males who have been obsessed with creating wealth to support this family you know and they've got kids and whatever and they've had no to the grind and they work so amazingly hard and then when they've actually made the money and they stopped to look around there's nobody there you know partners gone kids have don't kind of know them and it's because they weren't involved in the journey they were focused on the end goal and they missed what was going on around them they didn't pay attention to the kids they didn't actually have any of their relationships were not valid yeah so they'd, they'd worked really hard with good intentions to create this wealth for this family and then by the time they created the wealth there was no family left to share it with yeah you know it's important yeah. to be honest you know i think I, I see a lot of stories and i meet people in the world of business yeah that um they kind of they kind of have apologize for the amount of work they do and say they say that they're missing their family and all that stuff i think deep down a lot of people like that you know they they do enjoy that grind and that that you know and yeah i'm sure they would like to spend more time with their families or friends but deep down i think you know they're just so obsessed with that goal or whatever it might be you know that you know just let them be <laughs> let them go for yeah. it you don't need yeah, to feel yeah. that guilty about not spending time with people if your goal in life is to do a certain thing you know and the way that i see it is that um it, it's 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 the issue of um we need to love people and use money not love money and use people it's that one yeah, yeah. and and i i think that that is very very real about um if we do things in life to fulfill ourselves and make us happy and the byproduct of that is wealth we've cracked it yeah mm -hmm. if we if we just do things uh to create money and the miserable buggers what's the point yeah? yeah and yet in our society to have the right house and the right car and go on the right holiday and have the right um internal decorations all that kind of stuff becomes so important that there are lots of people get themselves into unbelievable amounts of debt so that they can look good to other people yeah yeah i know it's crackers you know and i'm obsessed mm. with all that stuff and it kind of focuses mm. for me on yeah transport mm. what have you but there's, yeah there's a quote by a, a a South American mayor that I've mentioned a couple of times, but I can't remember exactly, but he, his goal, and he's a socialist mayor, left, like a bit of a left winger, but his yeah. goal, which I agree with, is not not a future where poor all poor people can afford a car, but a future where rich people um, use public transport. <laughs> so, you know, because yeah. there's the many benefits from it in terms of quieter, cleaner, healthier streets and all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, yeah. The, the pull for yeah the, the faster car the bigger car the bigger house with the driveway and all that kind of stuff is, mm. is great isn't it the kind of the, the emotional yeah. pull from that stuff yeah well th th there's interesting things here it's like what is money money is energy so either we attract it or we reject it it's like it's just an energy form isn't it and if someone says money is not important to me that usually means i haven't got any yeah um and uh money's not important to me usually means that i'm not interested in doing things that might create it yeah but all of us have to create something we have to create we, we exchange our time for uh, our energy our time for, for the return which allows us to pay the rent and you know eat food and whatever yeah but uh, I guess that the, the, what, the, what we have to look at when we're looking at this point in, in transformation is what does money mean for you? What, what, what does it do? And one of the things in that is how would money change your life? How would money really make your life any different? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I've been, I mean, we we spoke before we came on air um, about you know the situation we're in on planet Earth at the moment, especially in the West, where you know industry is shut down and it's kind of chomping at the bit to get going again. Now you know everyone wants to get back to normal, or you know we'll see how that goes. Um, but you know, a lot of people, me me included, um, financially speaking, it's it's been quite incredible the last twelve months because I haven't been able to go out and spend in the various places that we would go, cafes, restaurants, and yeah. soft, soft play centers. My wife's a teacher, so she's been getting paid the whole way through. My business ticked over. It has been ticking over okay. So um, I've been able to clear off quite a bit of debt. <laughs> and so the mm -hmm. like financial stress has has been a, an all-time low for me. Um, and it's not something – there are other people like that out there on planet Earth. And I, I am, you know, sensitive to the fact that, yeah, obviously the money isn't flowing the way it was. So a lot of people are without it at the moment as well. Um, but there's a bit of a chance for a reset, isn't there at the moment, which will probably blow. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that, that um, uh, Dickens thing of um, it, it, if you need one pound a week and you've got 90 pence, you're poor. If you need one pound a week and you've got one pound, 10 pence, you're rich. Mm. Yeah. And it, it's like, you don't need to have 20 pounds if you only need a pound. If you've got more than a pound, then you're rich, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we've got um, a list here of the, the different kinds of how yeah. ways we can get money. How do you get money? Well, um, if you look at, I put this down as, as, as a general kind of list, but some people get their money from benefits. I, I know people, fine people, who have never actually worked and they're in their 30s uh, and they've raised kids and... And, and they've been supported by the state. That means they've been supported by you and I, really. Um, so that's one way people get money. Other people get money through inheritance. And I guess when we look at the royals and all the stuff that's going on, we're looking at a lot of people who are living on the inheritance, which has been gathered over many generations and may indeed have come from the British Empire, but that's like neither in or there, I guess. Yeah, but, I, saw, um, I saw one of Harry's quotes was about, how he's been cut off financially from his family. Uh, yeah. and I'm like, he's 36. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Some, I do have sympathy with, like, I wouldn't swap places with a, a prince mm. or a king or a queen. But, you know, no. You know, kind no. Of, they're, they're in a prison, aren't they? But hey, interesting yeah. anyway. Well, when, when you get to the point where you've got to earn it, um, the majority of people are wage slaves. And what that means is <laughs> that... Um, they're selling their time for an amount of money and that's fixed. They have no control over it. Um, so you, you get employed uh, to work so many hours a week at a rate. If you want uh, to earn more money than that, you've either got to do overtime and do a second job. But as a wage slave, that's the place where you're stuck. You know, um, and uh, you can't think about expanding out because you can't expand what you earn. You know, you're stuck with the amount of time you got, which is tough. Uh, the, the next ones are the investors who have put stuff all on one side and then they're investing in either projects or the stock exchange. I know quite a few people now that do Forex trading. Do you know, do you know what I mean by that? The, yeah, the, I do. Yeah, but it's not. Um, yeah, I'm not that up on it, but I'm fast. And I've just watched a little mini documentary on the iPlayer BBC about the GameStop stuff that went on a, right, a yeah, month yeah. ago, yeah. where a load of um, very small fry investors managed yeah. to kind of take trillions, billions, and billions from like the the serious investors, yeah. you know, Wall Street <laughs> investors. So yeah. it's it's like a little twenty minute thing on the iPlayer. It's well worth watching and fascinating. Yeah. Really, how yeah, kind of yeah. The system it, 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 it's, it's like the bitcoin thing you know that there are lots of people who uh, are and do um uh, make money by cornering a bit of the financial market and then they take their profit and, and go and and the forex traders are trading money on people selling currency so yeah. they're selling it from one to another and if you buy in at the right moment and get it and buy it or sell out at the right moment then you make the profit in the middle um, yep. And I, I know quite a few people that make a, a living um, or make a part of their living through doing Forex, you know, yeah. an yeah, interesting yeah. world to look at. Very. Um, yeah. Um, 
So like we, we got the investors, then you get the, the business leaders, people that are actually starting a business. So that that means if I'm starting a business, I can earn money from what I'm doing, but I can also earn money from the people that are working for me are doing. And whether they're employed or not, we've just been the whole thing with, with the Uber taxi drivers, are they employees or are they contractors? You know, that kind of stuff, which is yep. always interesting. Mm -hmm. But it, it, if you, if you want to really earn money, then you have to start some kind of business. Now, what that means, whether it's a business online or whether it is um, a business um, where you're actually doing material, moving stuff around and selling at a profit, but it, it's business, whether we're selling ideas or stuff. And, and the place to be, which seems to be when you get into the people that are um, having a rich, open kind of life, they're the multiple earners. They have multiple streams of income. So they might have a, a job that they're doing full time or part time. But they've got these other streams of income working as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so people have got eBay shops and all kinds of stuff. And they seem to be the people that um, when I'm around working are the ones that are are having the best time and they're doing the most you know and enjoying it yeah, yeah. i guess um, i mean with yeah. the, the internet the web has kind of democratized finance and the opportunity for business quite a bit hasn't it and it's still it's still in the process of shaking things up especially if you start yes. looking at looking at things like bitcoin which is quite divisive I, i'm fascinated by it and um you can either see it as something that's you know completely corrupt and horrendous and has no value or you, on the flip side, there are people that see it as the kind of natural ev evolution of, of money. And kind of the, the amazing thing about Bitcoin uh, is that it's scarcity and it's a digital thing. So it's like, um, imagine a, a digital thing like a photo on your phone, um, but only one of them being able to exist. And if you sent that photo, it didn't, it kind of got deleted from someone else's phone. So that to do that digitally is really hard and it's really clever. <laughs> but yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a very foreign concept to a lot of people and uh, it's going to be, I don't know how it's going to play out, to be honest, but it's going to shake things up like in quite a crazy way, I think. I'm just checking on this uh, £20 note, which is issued by the Bank of England. Now, they, it doesn't say it on here now, but it used to say, I promise to pay the bearer in de on demand the sum of, one, of £20. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, it does. It does, it says that. Bonus paid there. Yeah, it does. It says it on the front. Yeah. In tiny writing. So, but what that actually means is that that £20 note isn't £20. That £20 note is a token. It's a bond between you and the Bank of England to pay you £20, which yeah. actually means that the £20 doesn't really exist. It's a kind of, it's, that's where it comes down to its energy. Whereas we carry these tokens, these bits of paper around, and we say, hey, we're rich. We've got this stuff. But if the bank suddenly devalues what, the, what that pound rate is, then the bits of the tokens that we got, the bits of paper we got in our pockets suddenly become worth less yeah. or they become worth more. Yeah, yeah I, I saw a Twitter thread about finance and specifically looking at the Bank of England and because we have printed or generated a lot of money just out of thin air in the last year to pay for yeah. things. Yeah. Um, and it's not really underpinned by anything except for faith <laughs> in yeah, the yeah. currency. And yeah. um, we, you know, we're getting to the point now politically where we need to pay the debt back, apparently. Mm -hmm. But then this guy was saying, "Well, why do we? You know, it doesn't. It didn't exist a year ago, and it doesn't really exist now. And we, we're only paying ourselves back anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's mega low interest." you know yeah. why do we need to pay it back and it is it's i'm not clever enough to know the ins and outs of that but uh money it gets down to the idea about money being a form of energy doesn't it and it yeah you know, there are there are serious implications for inflation and interest rates you know for more you know, for the stuff so uh, yeah. you know there are countries where inflation has gone crazy out of control and a loaf of bread's cost you know a thousand pounds or whatever it is so yeah. um phew, i don't know man but yeah, money is energy. Basically, basically, I like that idea. But but it doesn't exist in that sense, does it? You know, um, the um, previous slide before you flipped it over. Um, the, the, it's like one of the things about that energy is like good energy, bad energy. There's good money, bad money, and it's like I can earn money as the byproduct of me providing a good service to somebody. 
yeah or i can earn bad money by providing a bad service to somebody or maybe stealing it so like like i i think that money as an energy like there's good energy bad energy you get good money bad money yeah mm. and and i think that there are people that are very rich that got their their riches through bad money and there are people that are very rich that got their riches through good money yeah, and I guess that comes down to the kind of societal stuff, especially in the UK and the our empire in terms of yes. what, what was our empire built on. You know, we, we, we're kind of yeah. asking ourselves some tough questions <laughs> about all that yeah. stuff, aren't we? Well, one of the, the, the things that, that we looked, looked at quite a lot on the course is the idea that it's, it's the law of attraction where people are, uh, at, it's the ham sandwich issue. Like, you know, I will have a sandwich, I will have a sandwich, I will have a sandwich. And th this idea that's going to drop out the sky like manna from heaven is going to be there for you. And as opposed to the idea that you're only going to get something, you're only going to get money, you're only going to get energy or resources if you do something to get it. So the, the old Quaker saying was, first of all, you pray, like you have the intention for what you want, but then you've got to move your feet. If you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change. And rather than the law of attraction, I like to think of the law of intentional action. It's like, I am going to attract these things to me because I'm going to go out and do it. I'm yeah. going to attract wealth and success to me because I'm going to go out and do those things that are going to make me successful. Yeah. You know? One of the things that comes up a lot in the work that we're doing as people are trying to change is the, and when you start looking at what we call the law of allowing, it's like, I, if I need to be in control of everything, I can't expand. People get fearful and they have to control things all the time. And once people um, start to need to control they, and they're holding on, they can't develop stuff. They can't develop themselves. There's a part of us when we have to step out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then, and it's like, it's only when you start to be prepared to actually experience a bit of fear that you start to allow others to, to do things around you. You know what I mean? And, and that's so, so important. We have to think outside the box and dare ourselves to be different. You know, and uh, one of the things when we look at, at the money blueprints and it's like, why do we think the way that we do and where did it come from? Um, I, I can remember Harv Eker who, who did the millionaire mind thing. And he uh, started his first business by getting loans on his credit cards to get some stock to do stuff. And he worked his way up and, and became successful. Fair, on, fair enough, good. And he said, when he managed to get a good car, and it was the first car, it was a flip top, and he's driving through town thinking, hey, you know, I've got myself a good car here. And he said, this truck, uh, like a, a, a pickup truck with guys on, in the back drove past. And they started throwing rubbish in his car through the open top, going, ah, filthy rich, you know, uh, you dirty bugger, and all that kind of stuff. And we're really customs went out. And he said he was really shocked that people <laughs> couldn't, couldn't allow him to have actually been successful. You know, but if someone is going, oh, you know, to drive a car like that, you must be a bloody thief. You know, they're actually saying that they will never be able to drive a car like that because they'll never allow themselves to be able to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's that kind of yeah. thing. You know, I know cars are controversial in this company, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm, yeah. yeah, fascinated yeah. by that. I, I remember that story as well. I've read that book. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we got, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. on, the law of rever reversed effort as well. Yeah, yeah. So like the negative side of the law of attraction is when I start disallowing myself or others to create what is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, and, and it, you, we, we create a, a reversed effort. You know, it's wrong to do these things. Money is bad. It's dirty, filthy lucre. You know, I'm not allowed to be successful. Whoever told you should be, be successful. You know, and, and we have this thing in, in the UK where if if people are wanting to be successful we think they're arrogant rather than actually actually success could be okay couldn't it mm -hmm. you know? and it's not the money we earn is what do we do with it yeah good money bad money good energy bad energy yeah, yeah? i mean i i know i know for a few people that are um, you know retirees and done pretty well for themselves and very, you know very understated with kind of i mean money isn't the type of thing you can talk about in conversation anyway how much you earn or how much you've got in the bank 
which is maybe that's more a British thing or just general manners. But, um, you know, there are a lot of people with money that have put it to good use and are quite, yeah, understated yeah. about it and aren't necessarily driving a convertible or not that there's anything wrong with a convertible. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> not, not flaunting it too much. I, th I think the important thing about this is that it, it's that law of what you feed grows and what you starve dies. What you feed gets bigger. It gets bigger in your mind and your emotions and your feelings. And if you're in, in a world where you're focusing on fear and negativity, then you're going to get more of it. You're going to create more of it. What you feed grows, what you starve dies. Yeah, you know, you've got to allow yourself to, to let it flow. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've just clicked on a couple of sides, but yeah, I mean, yeah, no, that's okay. At this point in the, we need to crack on. Actually, we've been rambling on for ages, but we do talk about. <laughs> we start to try and get people thinking about what their business idea could be, and there's a big population of people out there that that you can serve. Yeah, in there. yeah there's over seven billion people in the world. You know, it's grown all the time, um, and it's like um, we've got over a billion now on the internet, um, and it's like there's a whole market out there. If you want to offer things and do things, you can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we developed out of the work we were doing was what we called the mind bank. So allowing people to come together, share ideas, brainstorm, get their creative skills and practical skills going to help each other. Yeah. Yeah. That basis thing about if you all look after each other, we're all going to be OK. We have lots of skills. It's like I, I can't make bloody websites and computers work, but you can. So if we work together, you know, something happens. Yeah. No. And well, you're always sending or well, not always, but you've sent quite a lot of people my way, you know, give Ed a call about this, he'll help you out. And so a mind bank mm -hmm. idea, um, it's just a network, isn't it, of people that that you know yeah. and kind of um, appreciate and value their contribution. And it could be something as simple as if you've got an interest in something, just setting up a little WhatsApp group between you and a few mates initially to just yeah. to keep you on track with that idea and get ask, ask questions and ask help um, and get yeah. that idea of a, a mentorship in, in embedded mm. but if you see someone that's successful at something you know and you think oh i could do a bit of that maybe the thing you need to do is to go and say to them hey how did you do that yeah you know isn't learn that, isn't that in the movie uh the piece the pursuit of happiness with uh will smith yeah, yeah. where he's um, dragging that item around that he's trying to flog flog at hospitals and then he kind of sees a, tr a, a trader um pulling up in a ferrari outside his big swanky office and he just goes up to me and says how did you get that car or whatever like that and uh, yeah. i mean that's a really good film to watch actually in terms of uh yeah sticking at it and following your yeah, dreams yeah. and all that and going through the good yeah. times and the bad and the very 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 bad times <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah good movie okay so um oh, what, what's your project? What is it that you want to do? And, that, and that's the thing. I think you need to focus in on what do you, it's like you've got a lot of life to live. All of us have, you know, are we going to invest in that? And by investment, I mean, invest our emotions and our heart and our spirit and our mind in it to create the kind of world that we actually want to be in. You know, that's the, the issue. That's the important bit. Um, and most people uh, don't. And I have that on a regular basis, working with people that are in later life saying to me, I wish I had, I wish I hadn't, why didn't I, why didn't I, rather than actually consciously being involved in this process of life as it goes along. Yeah, it's, never too, it's never too late, is it? But yeah, I mean, I guess it's also important to take your time in, in terms of trying to figure out what it is you want to do, because I mean, you, if you've ever watched a YouTube video and there's been an advert playing before trying to encourage you to sign up for the next get rich quick scheme um yeah just just be cautious with those things not yeah, necessarily yeah. through personal experience but usually if something sounds too good to be true it can be a little yeah. bit too good to be true one of the things that this important just as a last bit is that most startups the vast majority of startups are done by the over 60s <laughs> they're people that have done their work maybe they have created a bit of a pension or whatever and now they're deciding before they come to the end of their working life, whether that's going to be 60, 70, 80, whatever, that they want to have a crack at doing something for themselves. Yeah. Um, and that, it's interesting to me that we have people in older life that are actually doing the startup, not the young people. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. well, I'm quite, I'm quite embedded in the kind of net zero question about how we get to net zero carbon emissions. So <laughs> like the, the opportunity for new businesses to set up around 
on the back of that are astronomical. Um, so I would encourage people to think about that. And, you know, yeah. if you are setting up a business, you have to remember that we, you need to do it within the, the finite limits that planet earth is kind of set out, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. which are severely under stress at the moment. So yeah, so there are 7 billion people uh, on planet earth, but you probably won't be able to reach all of them um, sending heavy items around the world via <laughs> airplanes and kind of diesel powered ships. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. You know, there's, there's probably, you know, a hundred thousand people living within a five, 10 mile radius of you. So yeah, focus on them. Yeah. yeah. As well. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. You happy, Sean? I'm good. Well, I'm good. So what's step nine next week? Can you remember off the top of your head? Um, step nine, we're starting to move towards this new way of being. Exciting. So next week is going to be very exciting. Brilliant. Okay. The new, the new you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time. I'll catch you with you next week. Yeah, you take care. All See right. you now. See you See later. You. Bye. Bye.